Oh god, it's hot as balls. I hate making thumbnails because everything always falls on me. Okay, you're not all gonna fall on me. Ah! We're going with the other one. Hi guys, I'm Monica and welcome back to my channel, When He Reads, where I talk about books and things. And today I have a very exciting video to film, which was a B-I-T-C-H to film because I I am not very good at this kind of thing. I always suck at like sticking to a number. Oh, hang on, you're kind of crooked, I'm sorry. Okay, there we go. <laughs> it's really hot. So yes, I really suck at sticking to numbers. Like I, if you tell me Monica pick five books, I'm gonna pick 10. Every seven on Sunday video I film has like 10 or 11 books instead of seven. So this was hard, but I did it. Well, okay, I cheated a little bit. A little, little, little tiny, teensy bit. But I picked my top 10 books that I've read so far this year. And I kind of wanted to do this because, eh, eh. because I think we often forget the books that we read throughout the year and I think it will be interesting to see how many of these stay in these spots or change in the second half of the year. I've had a really good reading year so far. I think the best reading year that I've had in a really long time and I really, really wanted to do honorable mentions but I decided to keep it, I, I think, I think I kept it at 10. Now that I'm looking at the stack, I'm wondering. Let me count them again. Okay, so let's get started. These are actually in order. So we're gonna go from number 10 all the way up to number one, baby. And you all know what number one is, but I'm still gonna talk about it. Okay, so for number 10, we have Magic for Liars. I really struggled with this because I've read a lot of classics and a lot of books with way more literary merit than this book. But the truth is, this book stuck with me. This book stuck a chord in me, struck a chord in me, and I really, really appreciate what it did. I appreciate the way it was done. I know this is probably going to be not to everyone's liking, but if you are a sibling and you have ever felt like inferior to your sibling, this book is going to strike a chord with you. And I think every sibling goes through that whole sibling rivalry thing. And, and the thing about this book is one of the siblings is magical, the other one is not. And we follow the non-magical sibling trying to help the magical sibling. So it's kind of a really weird twist of fate. And I just, I really, really appreciate what this book did. And I am putting it at my number 10 spot. Like I said, these are the top 10 books that I've read this year. And I know that you're thinking that I would probably put Jane Eyre or Little Women or Withering Heights on here, but as much as those books are kind of like all-time favorite books, I think this classic beat them out, and that is The Picture of Dorian Gray by Oscar Wilde. Um, I don't think I need to explain this book much further than that. I mean, there's this guy, he's really obsessed with his looks, and he basically makes a deal with the devil so that a painting that was done of him ages and gets uglier, The as he does ugly things and it doesn't reflect on him. I picked this book simply because I had never read The Picture of Dorian Gray and Oscar Wilde blew my mind with his prose. Like I remember vividly just like I, I, I started to tab the things that I like and do you see that? There are so many tabs where I was just like, so basically I just love this entire book and that's the reality. I really love the way this was written and that's why it makes it to my number nine spot. Above books that I consider all-time favorites. Not that this isn't an all-time favorite, but I say that my favorite classic right now is Withering Heights, but this one's on here and Withering Heights is not. All right, here's where I get a little bit of a chooty chooty vein, but I just couldn't name one of these. So I went with the whole trilogy. Don't hate me. My cat is going to the litter box. Let's wait for her to get done. She's, she just waits for me to turn on the camera. I swear to God. That's what she does. She sits there and she waits. 
All right, as I was saying, I can't just mention one of these books without mentioning the subsequent sequels. So I'm gonna go with the Wayfarer series by Becky Chambers. Now, if you don't know what these books are about, this these books follow a just like a couple of humans in or AI in the case of the second one in this world um they're, they're all in the same kind of universe but they're not necessarily i guess they are i mean you could kind of read them not in order but i actually recommend that you go for it and the reason that these are here these are feel good sci-fi books all these books made me cry i love every character in this book there's not a single book out of these that i was like okay this one is better than this one i well i guess if i had to put them in order i i oof i would go with this one first which is weird because this one is, has the lowest rating on goodreads but then i would go with the long way to a small angry planet and then i would go uh close and common orbit but honestly they're all great if you really want something that makes you feel good in the end because i know sci-fi tends to be a little bit of like kind of messy and like it doesn't leave you feeling good these books leave you feeling really really good um this one is about found family this one is about questions of ethics and morals when it comes to ai what does it mean to be in a body that is not yours not the body you you feel you were meant to be into and either accepting that or finding a way around it i'm not i'm not saying that this is a, a trance book by the way i'm talking about computers <laughs> you know and then uh this one talks about Im immigration what it's like to be an immigrant what it's like to decide to migrate from the place that you were born from the place that you were raised in and all of these have female on female relationships that are not tragic all of them okay i don't think this one does but these two definitely and this one has a female female relationship that where the characters are over 70 years old and they're still in love with each other and it's just the most beautiful thing in the world um i absolutely adore it all the women oh this this book focuses mostly on female characters and that is incredible in sci-fi and this book focuses on, on has polyamory friends with benefits in a consensual beautiful way that doesn't turn romantic because why does friends with benefits have to turn romantic but yeah i absolutely love this trilogy and i couldn't mention them isolated all right what do we have next up next we have a non-fiction and i think you all are gonna guess what it is and that is the soul of an octopus by sam montgomery i mentioned this book on my channel so much in fact the next books that i have to say i feel like i'm just gonna show them to you and you're all gonna be like yeah i know what that's about because you've seen my videos but anyway uh in case you, this is your first video or something <laughs> the soul of an octopus is the story of a nature writer named simon montgomery and her first experience working with octopuses and working with a lot of aquatic wildlife and how she falls in love with them and how aquatic wildlife is basically the most alien thing to us on the planet like it's 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 more alien than insects really because at least insects we see out here but with aquatic creatures the fact that they're underwater that we can't ac access them that they don't even breathe like us we actually have had to prove that they even feel pain which kind of crazy now that i think about it but this is a feel good book about loving animals and it got me back into reading um non-fiction and i just really appreciate simon montgomery's take on animals and their ability to make you feel love and compassion and how maybe we're going about it the wrong way and she also mentions how in the scientific community you're still kind of laughed at for saying that animals have feelings even though this book shows us eels do dream we just are not sure what they dream about but maybe they're dreaming about something beautiful just like we do okay this is where it starts to get repetitive but I'm gonna mention Solaris by Stanislaw Lem. Absolutely love this book and that is an actual surprise because if you saw me reading this book, I'm gonna link the video up here which is my book to movie adaptation blind date project. 
halfway through this book I was like this is gonna be a three stars blah 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 and then it suddenly turned into a five star book and now I just I can't imagine a world where I don't read this book it's it's that great um I think Stanislaw Lem takes the approach of first contact with aliens that I like where it's like why do we think aliens have the intelligence that we have why do we think that aliens would contact us in the way that we would contact them and what if aliens have been trying to contact us but we haven't been paying attention so i'm just gonna leave you with that i really really want you to go into this book blind because i literally went into this book blind i went into this book just knowing that there's a planet named Solaris and there's a movie with George Clooney in it and I think that that's the best way to go about it now there is going to be a point in this book and I say this in every single video that I mention this book where it gets a little bit bogged down with fake science basically and you learn about a bunch of stuff that is really unnecessary and I think it could have been edited out but if you can get through that and get to the like real root of this story and the fact that it's just a beautiful story about first contact with aliens and I'm just gonna leave it at that go into it as blindly as possible the next one I actually don't mention a lot in my channel and that is Rebecca by Daphne du Maurier I did mention this in the most beautiful books that I own which I will link up here but I don't mention how much this book means to me a lot. Um, this book is about a woman who marries, who gets really lucky actually. She comes from a like humble background. She meets this really rich man, older man, marries him. She thinks she's happy with him until she finds out about his ex-wife. Well, not his ex-wife, his late wife. And she makes a decision that she can never be as Rebecca, the wife, was. It gets to the point that she loses herself so much into this, like, I want to be like Rebecca, but I can't, that we don't even find out her name throughout the entire book. This book, I think, depicts anxiety in a way that few books have ever, that I've ever read, depict anxiety. Because a lot of things, a lot of people think anxiety is just like that moment of panic and your chest and, 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 and this book depicts the anxiety of everyday life, of feeling people are angry with you, of maybe thinking somebody's trying to harm you when really, are they? Are they really trying to harm you? And I love the mystery. I love how Daphne du Maurier creates these mysteries where it's like, in the end, you think, what really happened? You know, what happened? And it just it's beautiful and i did talk about how the idea of manderley itself reminds me of my home and uh what happens to manderley kind of resonates with what happened to me with my home where i feel something that i can't tell you because it'll spoil the book for you but um uh, it's an amazing book i recommend it and apparently alfred hitchcock's movie um is really good but i hesitate to recommend anything by alfred hitchcock because he was just not a nice man to women and I don't I'm not about that on this channel so if you want to watch the movie um I'm just mentioning it because it exists but I actually don't recommend that you watch it not that he's gonna get any money from it because he's dead but um he was a horrible person to women so you do with that information what you will so the next two books I had a really hard time deciding where to put them but I feel this is the place where they belong and the next one I actually it hasn't arrived to me yet but um, I have the picture here and that is The Seven Husbands of Evelyn Hugo. As a Latino woman, it's really hard for me to find myself in stories that are not based on immigration. Which I think immigration stories are wonderful and they should be told and you should know about them. But there is so much more to the Latinx community than just being an immigrant. You know, we are complete people. And while immigration is a part of our community for the United States, um, this doesn't talk about immigration. In fact, it just talks about a badass, bisexual, Cuban descendant woman who, who becomes a movie star on her own terms and who tells her story on her own terms. And I 
love that i love this story and this story was so well told that by the end of it again i wanted to watch all of ella and hugo's movies i wanted everything about evelyn hugo and i am so happy that i read this uh this is just her telling her story to a journalist who she picks out of a bunch of journalists and nobody really knows why she picked this particular journalist to talk to until the very end of the book and i'm not gonna spoil that for you but just know that evelyn is a morally great character with flaws and mistakes and i love to read about those kind of characters because I don't want my characters to be perfect i want them to have problems and to have issues and to do things that perhaps i wouldn't do or perhaps i would do in the real world and i think that sometimes we like to brush under the carpet the ugly bits and i as a dionysus person i guess like to take the shit out and show it to the world so I definitely put Miss Evelyn Hugo at my number four spot. Number three, um, I, I, I just can't with this book, uh, Do You Dream of Terror 2 by Tammy O. I've talked, again, I, the next three books I've talked about, I, I like holding it like this, not only because of the glare, but the sp I think the spine, I think this book is gorgeous. Like I almost put it in my most beautiful covers, but again, I've been talking about it so much, I think you're tired of hearing me talk about it. But let me just summarize it really quickly. This book is about 10 people, six kids. It's mostly about the kids and four adults. They're all picked through rigorous, horrible training to find the absolute elite of the elite of the elite to go on this mission on this planet called Terra 2 that we just found. And the mission is gonna take 23 years and that's kind of the premise but what this book is really about I think is a character study of people that have been told their entire life that they're special and they don't feel special and how mental illness is really prevalent within high achieving people not not just high achieving people but I think that this is something that is not talked about a lot where you feel like all you are is your intelligence and that does a mess on yourself and what happens when you have this goal to get to and this goal is almost impossible but they have told you all your life that this is what you are meant to do and how much are you willing to sacrifice to make that a reality i absolutely love this book i love how this book deals with mental health i love that it doesn't gloss over it i love that the characters that suffer through mental health issues in this book don't just get cured overnight and sometimes they don't get cured at all but they learn to live with their mental health issues and i love that it's all in a sci-fi setting and i love that the ending of this book is so open and we i don't want to spoil it but it's really open and I adore that. If you don't like open endings, don't read this book. But if you like really intense character studies, realistic portrayals of people, um, not only of teens but of adults and of adults that have to deal with that strange age where you are an adult legally but that you still have the mentality of a teenager and how even though you have the mentality of a teenager, you have to act like an adult. This is the perfect book for someone like me so i mm, love this book so much the next two come on now in spot number two we have dune look i'm gonna just link up here a sci-fi recommendation that i have where i talk about dune for like a good while but this book i understand now why everybody is like this is a pillar of science fiction and why you should definitely really She's a thick girl, but it's so worthwhile to read this book. It's it just it's about so much more 
than just sci-fi. I don't know. It's 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 about it's a hero's journey. Somebody described it like that in my comments, and I was like, that's exactly what it is. It's a hero's journey, and you can see so much of what I like about sci-fi in this book and how. It kind of started all started here and I love that this book does not erase this I'm not gonna call this Afrofuturism because I think for something to be Afrofuturistic it has to be written by an African or a black author this, uh, and Frank Herbert was definitely a white man but I like that this book does not erase African culture and actually puts it center stage and I really like that and I find that fascinating considering that he was a white man writing in the 60s. I'm not saying this book is perfect in that aspect, but I am saying that this book does have incredible um, tact when it comes to dealing with the different races. And I think it's done in an incredible way. So definitely give this book a chance if you are into sci-fi. And I just realized most of this is all sci-fi so I'm sorry not sorry <laughs> and you know what it, the grand finale is if you've been on my channel for longer than just this video my number one book that I've read this year is Born by Jeff Vandermeer and I'm not gonna go into it except to say this book features a badass mother that is a savior that is gentle that is sensitive that is a woman of color that loves and forgives and that is the heart and soul of this book i will also link my gush up here so that you can find out more but basically this book just rocked my socks like i i i think there's only one other book that i've read in my life that made me feel like this book has made me feel and that is my favorite book of all time so I adore this book. I adore everything about it. Even the cover. Again, I was going to put this in my most beautiful covers, but I, you're so tired of seeing this book in my channel that I just decided against it. But this is such a beautiful story. Um, it's so rare for Jeff Vandermeer to write something like this because I feel Jeff Vandermeer is kind of like this writer that is very cold. And if, you read, if you've read the Southern Reach trilogy, then I'm pretty sure that you feel like he's really cold and like keeps you at arm's length. And this book draws you in. It's like, here, here are some feelings for you. And it's amazing. I definitely recommend the audiobook. The voice, the voice for Born that they do in the audiobook is perfect. It's just perfect because Born is, it, Born is a plant-like creature in the beginning and then he turns into a sentient being but he's still very childish and this is where the relationship of mother son weird creature comes in but i love how rachel is so willing to take on this motherly figure it's really beautiful i really recommend it i i just i have no more words for this book and well guys i did it <laughs> i kept it all right it's technically 12 books because one is a trilogy but like i said was not willing to mention one without the other so those are the 10 books that i've read this year that are the top 10 so far this year let's see how this changes in december when i do well in january when i do my top 10 overall books i can't imagine having to take one of these books out of here like that's gonna be so so hard maybe i'll do a top 20 in 2020 <laughs> and i'll just keep adding books <laughs> but yeah um these these books i of course i recommend that you read each and every one of these i think that in this i'm sorry i keep looking down i'm looking at the books in this pile you can really get a feel for my reading taste i definitely like reading sci-fi i like feel good sci-fi i like eco-futurism i like character studies and yeah that's yeah that's pretty like i uh, out of these books there is there are 12 books here there's one two three four five six seven okay there's like more than half of my favorite books of the year are science fiction so and yeah and they're all adult science fiction uh do you dream of terra 2 by temio i think i think a lot of people might consider that 
a YA, but I definitely wouldn't consider it a YA. What I consider YA is would I be comfortable as a teacher giving this to a 13 year old to read? And if I wouldn't be comfortable giving it to a 13 year old, I um don't consider it YA. So <laughs> yeah, um that's it. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I hope you guys got something out of it and Thank you guys so much for coming to my channel. If you are new here, thank you so much for joining. I hope that you will stay a while. And as for me, I'm going to bid you adieu. And I will see you in another galaxy far, far away. Bye guys and thank you so much for watching.